Hi everybody, this is Virginia Milner coming to you with the DeKalb County Public Library and today we at Jewelry with Jen will be making this really neat open collar necklace. Oh, we can't get back far enough. There we go. I have been wanting to do one of these since I saw them at um, Paris Fashion Week. Dior had some and Valentino had some or something like that. And I have been really wanting to do something like that this ever since. It's basically you just kind of drop it over your neck, shape it around your neck any way you want it to hang. It's all out of wire with, some, with a few beads. And what I did, what I chose to do today or for this particular project is focus on um, one of my favorite things to do is kind of focus on different regions and cultures and things like that. And this one is reflective of the fact that um, the Napa Valley grape harvesting season started two weeks ago. So we're going to do one that, or I'm doing one, that represents the grape, grape harvesting, grape harvesting uh, season. As you can see, I have my nice little um, bunch of grapes there. I have um, my grapevine just kind of trailing down my um, design here. This is all up to you though. I'm going to show you how to do this, but you can take uh, this information and um, make it any way you want. Do any type of design that you want. But I wanted to show you how to do the basics of it, just to uh, do the form, and um, then you can go from there anywhere you want. I also did another one. We're not doing that one today because um, I kind of did a little poll and people kind of voted on the other one. But this is the other one that I made. Uh, it was around your neck. Yeah, I'll put it on. I don't know if you can see it very well on camera, but um, it just goes on your neck and oh. So anyway, I love them. I, I am absolutely in love with them. I think they're really great. Um, you don't have to have clasps or anything like that. And they're a lot of fun to make and you have a lot of um, uh, freedom of art, artistic freedom to do whatever you want with them. So I'm gonna show you how to do the basics of this. You can take it and run with it and, and go any direction you want. And um, we're gonna get started because they're, um, it's really pretty simple once you get the basics. Um, but I've got a lot of little moving parts going to this one because of my grapevine theme. So I'm gonna uh, show you how to do this. Oh, first of all, you're gonna need the usual tools. You're gonna need your round nose pliers, flat nose, square or chain nose pliers and cutters. And you can use any kind of cutters. They can be flush cutters or they can be just the regular um, jewelry making cutters. You're also going to be using beads. Again, I'm going to show you this particular design. So what you're going to need is beads for your, your grape, um, your bunch of grapes, your grapevine, and I threw a few leaves in there. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. It's entirely up to you. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. And um, 20 or 18 gauge wire, or you can even use bigger gauge, uh, 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 thicker wire, which would be 16 gauge. Uh, for shaping purposes, I, I would try to not make it too uh, tough, the wire too tough, but I would not go smaller than 20 gauge. Um, anything smaller than that, it's going to be a little, it's not going to be um, sturdy enough. So this is 20 gauge wire. And this one I did with 24 gauge wire because as you can see, I have several strands. There's several strands there all bound together. So that's, that's the only difference. But I would stick for, if you're just gonna use one or two strands around your neck, I would stick for um, 18 to 20 gauge wire. I'm using 18 today, I used 20 for that one. I'm trying out this 18, it's a little heavier. I usually don't, um, don't go with that because it's heavier and it's harder to, man to manipulate, but it also holds its shape really well. Okay, so what you're going to need to determine is how 
long you want your necklace. I'm sticking with a traditional 18 inch drop, uh, which is what I did for that one, or possibly a little bit shorter just so I can make it a choker. Uh, one side of it, uh, this one is like a choker and the other one has a drop. So what I did was um, get enough so that I can cut off what I don't need after I make my design. Um, and you're better off uh, kind of determining what it is you want, especially if you're using really expensive wire. I'm not, uh, I'm using some very basic wire, um, copper wire. Silver, I decided to go with silver this time because the last two I made with, um, oh, what did I make? I used um, bronze in the one that I just showed you, this one with the green. And I used antique bronze for the other one. So a lot darker. And so this time I decided um, that instead of the green beads or the purple beads and the bronze or the antique bronze wire, I was going to go with silver wire and red grapes. We're going to have red grapes today. So what I did was cut um, a yard and a third of wire. So that gives me 48 inches of wire and then uh, it's going to be double uh, or folded in half. So that knocks it down to, what is that 48? 24 inches of wire. It gives me enough to, enough to work with to make um, curls or spirals if I want to. And I can just cut off what I don't want if I see it's going to be longer than I want. So that's what I did. A yard and a third of wire told you the tools that you need. You're going to need jump rings that I'm going to show you how to make for your, to do your, um, your bead cluster, your grape cluster. Uh, you're going to need beads for your other cluster of grapes for the grapevine. And I'm using four millimeter um, Swarovski crystals for that. And then I'm going to use for the, the cr cluster itself, I'm using crackle beads all in red. And then I, I said I was gonna throw in a couple of leaves. Again, you don't need the leaves. I'm just doing it for effect. Um, if you can't find them or, or whatever, you don't need them for your cluster. It's just a little added something. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on that. And here we go. So let's get started. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my wire and fold it in half. I want to make one of my one of my spirals, one of my curls a little longer than the other. So what I'm going to do is give myself uh, fold it in half, but give myself an extra three inches on one side. So I'm going to take my wire and, and that again depends on how long you want your extra, your, your second one to be. I'm going to give myself about an extra three inches, three to five inches. So one's just a little longer than the other. And then I'm going to fold this over in half. And if I use my pliers, I can kind of control it a little bit. And notice how I'm leaving this curved. I'm not going to bother with trying to straighten it out because I'm going to be curving it again. I'm going to be shaping it for my neck and I'm going to be curving it into a design. So there's really no reason to straighten it out. You want to get any bumps or bulges out, but you don't have to straighten the wire out completely. Now I'm leaving a long loop here because that's where I'm going to hang my um, little dangle. And I have a sample one here. So I'm going to be hanging my little dangle from here. So I want to leave a little bit of a loop, an open loop, a long loop, then I'm going to close up with some wire. So now I have 
I folded wire. One end is longer than the other. And the first thing I'm going to do is wrap my loop closed. Now for that, I need 24 gauge silver wire. So I'm just going to take about three inches of wire. We only need a couple of inches, but you also want to give yourself a little bit of a tail of wire to hold on to so that you don't have to worry about having something to grip. So I'm going to slide this up. I just want to give myself maybe three quarters, half to three quarters of an inch of an opening here. And I'm going to wrap my wire around. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a tail to hold. And I'm going to wrap it around from top to bottom, from the top of the loop towards the long end of the wire. And I want to make sure that my wire is side by side, but not on top of each other. It just needs to be nice and close together, but still side by side. So I'm going to give myself about five wraps. There we go. Now this tail that I have here, it's not going to go anything anywhere up there because this is open. So it's not going to slide up, but it could slide down a little bit. So that in order to avoid that, I'm going to take what's left here that at the bottom that I was wrapping with, and I'm going to wrap it a couple of times around one of my wires. And that just kind of secures it. It's nice and tight. Every once in a while you can go in here with your pliers and push down on the wire, just kind of squeeze the wire, kind of tightens it. And it also makes your main wire sit side by side instead of on top of each other. So I'm going to slide those up so that they're nice and close together. Wrap it around one more time to the inside in between the two wires. And I'm going to clip it off nice and close on the inside of the wire. And I'm going to just crimp that down. And so the tail is inside in between. And it won't snag on your clothes or scratch your skin. Get in there, make sure it's nice and close. And then this tail. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just poke it down into the loop, take that tail and direct it down. Clip it off. Get in there. And notice how I hold on to the tail because I don't want that to go flying across the room. And then Clamp that down nice and clean. So there's my first wrap to secure it. 
kind of neaten up my neaten up my loops my coil here okay and then you go down this around. so this is one side this is going to be one side of my wire or of my necklace so now I'm going to start a little bit of shaping. You don't have to do this this soon, but it makes it a little easier to work with if it's a little smaller uh, instead of stretched all the way across. I'm going to shape this a little bit. And uh, this is going to need to be shaped to your neck. So I can shape it so that it looks nice on my dress, on, on my necklace form. But once you put it on your neck, you're going to have to shape it to your neck. Your necklace form is flat. And it doesn't really have the shape of your neck. So um, because this is wire, you're going to need to adjust it the way you want it. OK, so there we go. I'm going to put on my neck. And you can't see me doing that, but that's OK. Just put it on there so I can get an idea of how I want it. OK. Sorry, I'm putting it on my neck again. Okay. I'm going to flip this so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. Okay, I'm putting it on my neck so I can just get an idea of where I want this, the beginning of my drop to be on the other side. So here's this, here's where my little cluster is going to go. And then I'm going to, so I want to make sure I have at least that much clearance. So I know this is where things are going to get interesting on the other side. This is where it's going to be on one side. And this is where all my uh, decoration is going to go on the other side. So I want to measure that. I'm going to start right there and, and make it so that if I want to adjust it a little bit more, maybe I want to go over here a little or over way up there, who knows. But I'm going to give it um, the midpoint, which is right here on my neck. That's about where I want it to, to go and to hang. And so this is where I'm going to start my design. So I'm going to put another um, wrap on there to hold my wire together. I'll show you that one. Okay, so in order to do that, this is where I want to go. And you can measure this out. Um, some people use uh, uh, markers. You can use a marker if you want to mark off the spot if it's easier for you. I'm not a big marker fan just because I don't want to do it. But you can use washable markers and it's perfectly fine because it'll wash right off of your wire. Okay, so there we go. Make sure my wires are side by side, not bunched up. Okay, there we are. So this is where I'm going to wrap again, get another three, four inches of wire. And for this spot, I'm going to need another piece of wire because I'm also going to feed a piece of wire that I'm going to use for my grapevine. So I have kind of a double whammy going there. And for my grapevine, I used about 18 inches of wire. So I'm going to give myself that.
So I have a nice long 18 inches of wire here. And the way that's going to work is, I'm gonna put that in between the two base wires. Just right there. And then I'm gonna wrap around all three wires. So again, I'm gonna give myself a tail here. I'm gonna wrap around a couple of times. Again, I'm gonna check, make sure everything's side by side. Nothing's crossed over or bunchy or anything like that. It should be nice and straight. There we go. Always pays to check. There. Double check my placement. There we go. Grab my long wire. Put it in between. Have my little tail there. I'll take my short piece of wire and I'm gonna start my wrapping. There's my tail. And the first thing I'm gonna do is wrap in between the wires. So I'm feeding that in between the wires. I'm gonna wrap it around once. And again, and when you go in between the wires, you can wrap it around just the large wire. And then, so I've got two wraps around one of the large wires. And now I'm gonna wrap around both wires and the small one that's in between. And the reason I wrap around one wire first is because it gives it a little bit of security. If I just wrap it around the two wires, it could slide up and down. And I don't really want that to do that. It doesn't really hurt anything. Once you get your complete design done, it'll stay in place. But if I don't want it to move around a lot at first, I'd rather have use something to secure it. And every once in a while, again, I go in and squeeze my wire down. So that's nice and tight. Double check, make sure that my wires are side by side, not on top of each other. So, so I'm gonna give it about four reps. There we go. And I'm only giving it four because this other wire that I have here is gonna wrap around two. So now I'm gonna wrap it around one wire again. And this time I'm gonna go on the other side and wrap it around the other side of the other wire. And you can wrap it all on one side if you want. And then the two wires and then the same side, but. I kind of like to give it equal treatment. So there we go. And if you're really adventurous, you can weave. You can weave this and it would look gorgeous. I'm keeping it very, 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 very basic. So now I curve that inside, but I'm not gonna keep all of that wire. I just wanted to give it a curve so that it's easier when I cut it off to get it to conform underneath. And when I cut it, I wanna cut it off so that I can tuck 
the end wire in between the two wires so that then you don't have to worry about anything catching on your skin or your clothes. I say that a lot, but I, I just want to really reiterate that because especially if you do this um, for other people, you don't want something scratching their neck. They will never buy from you again. So let me clamp that down. Okay. And do the same thing on the other side. Do that in between the two wires. Punch those together so they're nice and tight. And then clip, lift it up a little bit, and then clip that end. Make sure you don't clip the wrong one. You don't want to clip the one that we have to make our grapevine out of. That would be tragic. And now, I want to clamp that down in between my two wires. There. And this wire belongs to my grapevine wire. So what I'm going to do is wrap that around a couple of times so that it's secure. So now that won't come loose. This is nice and secure. I'm just going to wrap it around twice and then go around one of the wires and poke that tail down in between the two wires. Let's grab that with my pliers if I can. Uh, let's just direct it down. There we go. So now, clip that end off. In between the two wires. We can get a clean, there we go. Let's push it back out a little bit. Hmm, there we go. There. Just little bits of wire so that they don't do damage. And let's clamp that down. And there's our, there's our other wrap. Let's see if I can get that up there where you can see. Maybe that's a little better, I hope. There. 
All right, so now it's time to shape. So now I'm going to take my wire, I'm going to shape it into what I want. And in this case, I just want to give it a little bit of a, a graceful curve. I'm going to go the other way. So I'm just going to shape it into a little curve. Like so. Okay, and now I think that's about where I want it. Maybe straighten that out a little bit more. Not quite as curved because once I make my spiral, that's going to curve it. So I think that looks good. Yeah. So now to make the spirals, I'm going to take my round nose pliers. And this is where you have a lot of creative license because it depends on how big you want your spirals to be, how, how you want to shape them. I'm going to, let me clip this rough looking edge here. I'm gonna give myself a little curl not too small because I want it to be part, I want it to be a nice design or part of the design. So I'm going to give myself a loop. And notice how it's a little straight on the end. I don't want it straight. So what I'm going to do is cut off the straight edge until I get down to the curved, the curved part. And I don't want that to go flying across the rim. So I'm going to cut that little end off down in this container. Now I'm going to continue with my spiral. I'm going to go about a third of the way down my pliers. And I'm going to make a loop, a nice medium sized loop. And I'm going to continue to loop it and close that up. So now I'm going to continue to shape it with my hand and make a nice little spiral. I'm just curving around. I don't want any sharp edges. And I'm just going to continue to curve it. Now another thing that you can use is something round to kind of give it your shape. I kind of like to do it with my hands better, but if you're more comfortable actually using a cylindrical item to get your, your loop, that's fine. And you can do a little of both. You can shape it with your hands 
and shape it with a, a form. So I think that's good for one. And now I'm going to do the other one. And now I'm going to do my second one. Yeah, I'm going to make a nice sized one and give it a lot of length. So again, I'm going to grab my wire, the tip of my wire. I'm going to go about a third of the way up my pliers again so I can have a fairly decent sized loop. I'm going to make a loop here. And then I'm going to continue to spiral. I'm going to use my hands for shaping. Again, don't want any sharp bends. I want it to be nice and graceful. And again, you can also use a round form in order to shape it if you'd prefer. I think it's more fun to do it organically with my fingers. But if you're looking for something precise, you might want to use a form. And for a form, I'm just saying like a little bottle or whatever is round and has the shape that you want. Curl that up a little bit more on the inside here. So the whole thing, the biggest thing with this necklace is the shaping. How you want it shaped, what you want it to look like, et cetera, et cetera. And that's really up to you. Just give it a little bit more of a curve down here. Okay, so there are my two loops. Awesome. And then you can decide whether you want them spread out, close together, how you want, how you want it to look. And you can also do that when it's on your neck. You can kind of play with it. But I think this looks good. So far, so good. Yes. Okay, so now we're going to make our little grapevine. And that's fun. So what we're going to do for our grapevine is just make little clusters. So the first thing I'm going to do is put on a leaf. 
Again, you don't need a leaf. You don't have to have a leaf. It's not a necessary item. And then the next thing I'm going to put on is several of my crystals. I think I'm going to go with between three and five. These are four millimeters, so they're pretty, oops, decent size. I'm going to do five. Okay. All right, so I have five beads here. Gonna fold it into a circle, into a loop, like so. Just kind of fold it back on itself until it's a nice little loop, and I'm going to twist. I'm going to twist that into a little cluster. I'm going to go down. I'm going to make another cluster. So let's put five more beads on. Oops. And five. Slide the beads down. Now I'm going to go a little further out because I want it to look like a vine. So I need to leave some space in here to wrap. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space. I'm going to loop my beads back around each other. Just make a nice little circle here. You'll see I have a space here. Between the other uh, cluster and the cluster that I just made, there's a space. So now I'm going to twist until it goes back to the other vine. Now, when you're twisting this, you want to be careful. You don't want to twist all in one place because it's sort of like an apple core. If you twist the apple core all in one place enough times, it will eventually break. We don't want breakage. So you wanna make sure that when you're twisting, you're twisting down the wire or up the wire, but not all in one spot. Okay, let's do another cluster right in the middle here. So five more beads. Them all out there. I don't like to put them all out there because the wire is flopping around and I'll end up with beads all over my floor, which I don't like or want. They're expensive. Okay. Five more beads. slide down the wire and give it another little space in between so that it'll be gradually climbing down the vine. Again, wrap it around until I have a nice little bead loop. And twist. There we 
go. Let's make another one or two. That's probably enough, but we'll, we'll go another one. So it looks like a nice little cluster of, cluster of grapes. And then you can shape this also, so it's really neat. And I'm just gonna do one more because this has gotta get boring for you to watch me make clusters. Okay, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, let's slide that. Where do I want you to go this time? Okay. You put it right there. Yeah, because that's going to look like a nice cluster of grapes. Yeah, that'll look good. So, um, again, leave a little space, and I'm going to put it in between here. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space, make my little circle of beads. Make my little bead circle. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And twist. Okay, there we go. Now, you might be saying that doesn't look like grapes. Well, now you can shape it. So I can kind of have one bunch, uh, the bunches on top and then have one hanging down where it kind of looks like a cluster of grapes. Do you know how they start off bigger at the top and then kind of gradually taper off at the bottom. So there's my little cluster of grapes. I personally think that looks kind of awesome. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna leave that one little cluster. You can add more to this, but The other one, I actually made a climbing vine. I didn't do it for this one. This is a little cluster of grapes here. And I'm going to have a little cluster of grapes here. And then I'm just going to have nice, nice little um, swirls. I think that's good. I think that's what we're going to do. So we're just going to leave that like that. Or I am, anyway. You can do whatever you want. It's yours. You don't have to do it like this at all. So that's how I'm doing this. And then what I'm going to do is kind of anchor it. And again, you don't even have to anchor it. You can leave it exactly the way it is. But I'm going to kind of anchor mine a little bit. So it doesn't shift too much. By just wrapping my wire around one of the one of the wires one of the base wires so now it's just like like so then i'm going to clip off the end and i did not need 18 inches i probably only needed about 12. Even that, I don't even think I needed 12. So now I'm going to clamp down that end in between my two wires so that it's hidden and out of the way.
Here we go. So there's my little grapevine. Now we're going to go to the other side. and create another cluster of grapes. Now, I'm going to put another little wrap around here so that I can keep it from, from popping too much. And again, you can weave this entire thing, but I'm keeping it very, very basic and simple. Okay, so I'm going to make our other cluster and then we'll decide on whether or not we want to close this up because this could make it very comfortable too to have two wires back there instead of one thin rigid wire but we're going to go ahead and make our cluster first so what we're going to use is some some i'm going to use some um, crackle beads for that because they're nice and round I found some that were the exact same color as my Swarovski's, my, my crystals, so that they'll go together nicely. And we're just going to make a nice little cluster of grapes, like this one over here. All right. So what you need is 15, 15 little um, uh, beads, whatever beads you decide to use. You need 15 of them, and you're going to need to you're going to need 15 um, head pins to put that together. So let me get that. Okay, so we have our head pins. <clears throat> and all you really need is about three quarters of an inch length for this because I'm using four millimeter beads. So you need about three quarters of an inch to an inch because you're only gonna need about an inch span of wire in order to, to make your loop. So we're gonna, we need 15 of um, these little beads on head pins. And what you wanna do is put your bead on the head pin and we're gonna make a little 90 degree bend in the wire. Now you wanna be really careful, especially if you're using um, fragile beads like crystals or I'm using crackle beads and crackle beads are already compromised because of the cracking process. So you want to be careful when you make your bend to make it um, not right directly on the bead. You want to give yourself a little bit of space in between the bead and the bend so that when you uh, bend it back and make your loop, you don't hear something go crack and then you've lost your bead. Uh, that's heartbreaking. I've had it happen. So now we want to take our pliers and we're going to make a loop. So we're going to just grab the tip of the wire um, about a third of the way down the pliers and grasp it and rotate until we have a complete loop. So there's my nice closed loop. And do that a few more times. Let's make another one. Bend it back. It, it doesn't have to be exactly 90 degrees, but almost 90 degree angle to my bead. 
about a third of the way down my pliers, make sure none of the wire is sticking out the back, and make a loop. Just rotate until I have a complete closed loop. Here we go. Let's make another one. Being on the wire on the pen, make my little bend. And loop it. It's a nice simple loop. Okay, now I made all of the others. Because I know you don't want to sit here and watch me make loops for the next 10 minutes or five minutes. So I've got my 15. My 15 beads, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and an extra because you never know what'll happen. But what we're going to do is make a little cluster, a little um, grape cluster. So the other thing that you need is um, Jump rings. I just lost it. <laughs> the other thing you need is jump rings for this. And you're going to need one, two, three, four of them. And you can make your own jump rings. I already made a few. So the way that you do that is to just take your pliers and um, depending on the size of jump ring you want, I'm going to go all the way up almost to the um, back of my uh, pliers because I want to make about a six. Uh, six millimeter jump ring and all you have to do is make a circle. I always overlap it because the tip of it is never round enough so I always kind of give it an overlap. And then cut it off. And I have a nice jump ring. So there we go. So now we have our jump rings. Just need a, a four of those. And we're going to put these on in, in a pattern of one, four, four, and six. So we're going to put one on a jump ring. And the proper way to open our jump ring is to put the, the pliers on one side of the hole. Here's the hole here. I'm going to put the pliers on one side of the hole and I'm going to use my thumb to push it open. So notice I didn't take the put the pliers on the inside and pull it apart because that would ruin your circle and you don't want to do that. You just want to push it open because then when I close it, I can just squeeze it back together. So I want to put one of my one of my beads on and put the second jump ring on. Oops. Oh my goodness. I'm just having a bad time of it. Okay. Put my bead on and my jump ring on and close the first jump ring. Now see what I said about closing it all I have to do is push it and it's nicely closed. You might need to jiggle it a little bit to just make sure that the ends are perfectly meeting because you want that perfectly closed. So there we go. And then take the second jump ring that I just put on and open it. Again, I can do it with two pliers, or I can do it with one plier and my thumb. And I'm going to put four beads on that jump ring. One, two, and I find it easy once they start to crowd up on one side, I turn it around and go to the other side. So I don't have, I don't run the risk of them falling off. So now I have a whole other half to slide the other two on and the next jump ring. And then I close it. Grab the new jump ring that I just put on. 
open it, put four more beads on, one, two, go to the other side, three, four, put my last jump ring on, close it, close up this one, make sure it's nicely closed, jiggle that a little bit, make sure it's completely closed, nice and tight. And then get that other jump ring that I just now put on. There we go. And open that. And we're going to put six beads on. One, two, three. Go to the other side. See how crowded it gets. Four, five, six. And then here, we're going to put on an eye pin. So we get that. Yeah, we can make our own eye pin, but I think, yeah, let's make our own eye pin. So let's close that up. I don't want to lose that. Don't want to forget which, which one I have. I want to lay that down with a pin through it as a marker. So I'm going to make my own eye pin. It's very simple. Just grab a piece of wire, 20 gauge preferably, or bigger, which would be 18 or 16. Remember, the larger the number, the thicker the wire. So I'm going to give myself a loop about a third, place my wire about a third of the way on my pliers and just make a nice loop. And then I want to center my wire. This is the opposite way of doing it from the way we did before where we bent it back and then made the loop. This time we make the loop and then we bend it back. So I have a nicely centered ring. doesn't need to be that long, so I'm going to clip it off down to about another, about an inch. And I'm going to replace this one with my jump ring. Just open that up. Slide it on my head pen. and close. And there it is. Here's my nice little cluster of grapes. See if I can get a good picture here. show up very good on camera, does it? Okay, let's see if I can clean it this way. 
Let me get a good look. There we go. And now we're going to attach it to our necklace. So what I'm going to do is take another little leaf, put it on top, Here's my cluster. Make my 90 degree angle bend just above my leaf. And let's make a loop. I can cut it down to about half an inch. It doesn't have to be this long. So I'm gonna cut it down to half an inch. Cut that edge off down into a container, as is my motto. Make a loop, nice clean loop here. And attach it to my necklace. And close it. And there we go. And there's our necklace. Out the big camera so you can see. All right, let's flip this so that you can. See what I see. There, ladies and gentlemen, is our necklace. I love this one. Oh my gosh, that red is gorgeous. There it is. And again, you want to shape it. You, you. Uh, when I put it on the, the form, the form is flat. Your neck is not, or your your. Um, your upper torso is not, so you want to make sure you shape it so that it, it um, fits, fits you when you put it on. And you can adjust it when you put it on. You can make this shorter if you want to. I already tried it on, <laughs> so I know it fits me. But you can make, make this a little shorter. You can lengthen it. You can straighten it out a little bit if you want it down to the side. You can make it hug your neck. You can bring it up. You can bring it down. That's the joy of uh, this very versatile wire. So that is our program. It, it's not hard. I know people are going to get scared because this takes, it, it took me over an hour. But I'm going at a very, very slow pace in order to show you how it's done. And once you get the basics, you'll be able to do this in just about no time. At 45 minutes tops and you'll be finished. Maybe even half an hour actually, because all it all it, um, it requires is some shaping. You just need to shape it the way that you want it to, to be. The um, vine part is very, very simple. I decided, I opted to go with just um, a cluster here and a cluster there instead of having a climbing vine like I did with this one. I did the climbing by this one. I just did a cluster on each side just to have, just to give you an idea of something different, but it's the same premise. You do the same clusters. You just extend the twisted wire longer, but it's the same, same thing. I keep looking at it. 
I know you're tired of me holding this up, but it is so pretty. I can't wait to try it on. Yay! So anyway, that is our program for today. And oh, I can't wait to get it shaped. Anyway, that's our program for today. And uh, what we're going to do is, um, I want to do is have you please, please, please contact me. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, if anything's um, off for you. I know that I've had a situation where I've had people say, oh, I hear interference. And I'll play it back. I hear no interference on my laptop. But if I play it back on my phone or on something else that really um, can really pick up everything, I'll hear all what um, sounds like voices. I don't know where they're coming from. It's kind of weird. It's not coming from, from where I am. It's just kind of interference on the computer or on whatever the device is that I'm using. I'll also have problems with visual, visual problems. Um, I, the blurriness, I don't know how to combat that. Um, I've kind of adjusted my camera as much as I can. Um, but also, again, I've played it back because I always play them back several times or at least a couple of times before I post, uh, um, before I turn them over to the library to post. And on the computer that I do it on, it's fine. If I do it on my large um, desktop, it does not look as good. If I look at it on my phone, it looks even better. So I guess it depends on pixels and whatever uh, you settings you have on your, your phone or your laptop or your, your um, tablet or your computer. It makes a difference in how it looks. So I don't know what to tell you. I, I have several different, have taken, to, gone to the trouble of looking at several different, um, different types of computer, um, computers to see how it looks. Now, one, I couldn't even get it to, I couldn't even open it. Um, I had somebody say that I can't open the, I can't open the, um, the video. And I thought, well, that's odd. Then I tried to open it on one of my tablets. I have a really old one. I tried to open it on my tablet and said, nope, it's not supported on this device. Sorry. So there's that. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not a computer expert. I don't know what to tell you about all of these different things that happen. I am so sorry if it's not working for you very well, um, but I hope it's clear enough so that you can see what I'm doing and at least follow me somewhat. Light helps. At least follow me. If I have that light on when I have the camera down on my hands, it causes a glare. But if I, it, it also, but, so I have to have it off, which makes it hard for me to see, but whatever. But if I have it off when you're looking at me full vision, then I'm in shadow, seemingly. So uh, I have to play around with lights. One time I was in here and I had five different lights. I had lights over there and lights over there, lights overhead, lights back there. And I was, it was like 98 degrees. Um, but anyway, so much babble. I am sorry. I know this is really long. Um, so I hope it doesn't scare anybody away. I hope you at least give it a chance and let me know how it worked out for you and how your, your piece, um, how, how your piece comes out because I would love to see that. This was a really labor, a labor of love for me because I have loved looking at these beautiful, graceful necklaces for as long as um, I saw them uh, uh, on Paris Fashion Week. And so I'm so glad to be able to bring it to you. It's not something that I would normally be able to do, but because it's very, um, not labor intensive, but it's very close up work that I can't really show very well in a classroom or print out very well on written instructions. It's one of those things that you have to actually see. So I hope you like this. Please let me know. Please show me by showing me um, what you've done and what you want to look forward to seeing um, uh, as we go along. Um, can't wait to do another one. I haven't a whole line of different things that I want to do. It changes 
daily, sometimes hourly. I switch around the order of the things that I want to do because I want to give you a good variety. I want to be able to give you necklaces, bracelets, earrings, the whole nine yards. I haven't done a ring yet, but that's coming up. And um, so I hope that it's, it's filling in some blanks for you in regard to the things that you'd like to see. I have, <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell you that. I have something that's really neat that I have coming up, but I can't share the supplies with you yet. Um, so I'm not going to talk about it until I know that we're able to um, share some supplies with um, people that are watching this because it's going to be fun. So sorry about all the chitter chatter. Uh, let me know what you think. I look forward to doing this again next week, and I hope you look forward to seeing me again next week. Bye-bye, and have another great week.